You've probably heard people refer to keys or secret keys when discussing security. But what are they really? And why do they matter? Let's talk about it. Keys are any sequence of ones and zeros that are used in cryptography. For example, this is a key. It isn't a secret key because I've just showed it to you all, and it follows a predictable pattern. Generally, you want keys to appear a little bit more random. This is a better example of a key, and so is this. And what would make it a secret key is merely that this sequence is only shared or known by the intended parties. Keys are sized in binary by their number of bits. A single bit in computing is a single digit of a one or a zero. A two-bit key would be two digits, either of which can be a one or a zero, giving you four total combinations for every single two-bit key. A three-bit key would be three digits, giving you eight possible combinations of ones and zeros that you can make with three digits. This key right here is a 64-bit key. It's a sequence of 64 ones and zeros. To calculate the number of combinations in any sized key, all you have to do is take two and raise it to the power of the number of bits. We're using two because there's only two possible combinations in binary, one or zero, and the number of bits indicate how many digits of those two combinations there can be. For example, for our three-bit key, we would take two and raise it to the third power. That's the same as doing two times two times two, which is gonna get you eight. And notice there are eight total combinations of ones and zeros you can get with three bits. We can do the same thing with this 64-bit key. A 64-bit key is a sequence of 64 different ones and zeros. And to figure out the total combination of ones and zeros you could make with 64 bits, we would take two and raise it to the 64th power. That would give you 18 quadrillion different combinations. And this right here is merely one of those 18 quadrillion combinations. The thing you have to understand about keys is that every single key is susceptible to brute force attacks. If I know you're using a three-bit key, all I have to do is guess eight possible values, and I am absolutely guaranteed to have guessed your key. Therefore, there's a general rule in cryptography that the bigger the key you use, the more secure it is because it'll take a longer time to brute force the entire key space. Over here for a 64-bit key, if I was guessing keys at one billion per second, it would take me over 500 years to guess your key. And fun fact, by today's standards, a 64-bit key is considered no longer secure. Okay, so that takes care of answering the what is a key, but we haven't yet answered the why. Why do we need these keys to begin with? The purpose of keys is to combine industry established algorithms with uniquely generated keys. If you think about it, inventing new cryptographic algorithms is very hard. The cryptographers and mathematicians that invented the protocols like RSA or AES had to spend a ton of effort to create those protocols, vet them, and then ensure that they are secure. It isn't reasonable to expect people like us to create new algorithms every time we want to secure traffic on the internet. But lucky for us, when they created those algorithms, they created them in such a way that they could be combined with a secret key. This fixes the scale problem. Anyone in the world can use AES, and the math behind AES is publicly known. But since the algorithm is executed based on a particular key, it allows billions of people to use the same algorithm all the while using newly generated keys for each session. So you and I can use commonly known industry established algorithms and all we have to do is generate new unique keys every time you want to secure something on the internet. And that's much easier to do than generating new algorithms. The keys used by the various cryptographic algorithms can be symmetric or asymmetric. This introduces us to symmetric cryptography or asymmetric cryptography. Symmetric crypto uses the same key to both perform and reverse or verify a particular operation. And asymmetric cryptography uses the different keys to perform and reverse an operation. Now, even though these keys are different, they are related. They are in fact often created as a key pair, as in the key used to perform an operation is created at the same time as the key used to verify the operation. It isn't just two random strings of ones and zeros that somehow magically work together. They are literally created as a pair of values that are related to one another. Both symmetric and asymmetric cryptography gives us different operations. All of these we'll be talking about over the next few lessons. But at this point, we merely wanted to give you a formal definition for the terms keys and secret keys. So that takes care of this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at symmetric encryption. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.